Okay, we should be correct in English. I'm uh, afraid my French is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's all part of feeling that uh, the Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo because then everything would be French here because uh, they were a part of the empire. Also, if you let Napoleon the cabal, but also how the mind was. Yeah. But I agree, it was a monster or something. Okay. Um, yes, we are back. Um, we have seen our definition. Um, as I said, it is just a definition. And now we have this just a sheet to warn you that there are many lower concepts and terminology that are sometimes. Uh, Maybe what you should keep in mind every, every time you look at what you are saying there, uh, an emphasis on that you should not judge the system on how it is called, but you have to be delve, uh, delve deeper and see what it's about. So sometimes when we are speaking about disaster, especially when we speak about 3D disaster, so how to uh, how to register. Rise in that volume. Um, in fact, we are speaking about 3D land administration. But 3D disaster is, you know, we started uh, 20 years ago and, and dealt with it. So it's something that eventually is also used. Uh, Cholesterol training, I was more about technique. Uh, also, I mentioned this later about, yeah, uh, those bunkers. Uh, land book, that is more legal, uh, refer directly to, to uh, what, what is. Germany for land registration as a good book. Uh, land registry, uh, land re uh, registration, land registers, uh, mapping agency. If it's a mapping agency, you can see that in the Netherlands, that read one. Uh, organization dealing, in fact, with this land book, cadaster, uh, also a mapping agency, so it's a mapping agency. While in other countries, you see that those are different organizations. So, what the mapping agency mostly is doing. That's yeah, uh, topographical uh, maps, but can also be uh, maps that are important for the whole system of land administration. Something you will see in uh, England. Okay, so confusing. And uh, so when you're confused, uh, that is uh, normal. Maybe also pessimistic. Um, yeah, second part of my lecture the core of land administration. Uh, really see nice picture it's a picture that uh, Peter will speak more about but in fact when we make it very simple uh, the whole system is about this who what where and this is a bit different that is who how uh, about those rights about those restrictions so about the legal situation and yeah the last thing is about yeah the object and in most cases we call it a parse so the piece of land that we can identify in most systems, or maybe in all systems, we call that a part piece of land, but sometimes we also find faults. But that's about you know, where is it located and how much is it, how big? Again, Napoleon, that was the information he wanted. And who is the owner? Okay, now, it's important to know all rights to have, especially if I want to identify the owner, because I can send him the tax bill. And about this, uh, of course, is yeah, how big is it? So, also something about the value. This question who, what, where, that's in fact the core of all systems of land administration, is very simple. When you see something, and I'm not going to speak too much about it, but uh, Peter will deal with this because he's also very much involved. And after this lecture, I understand we're going to have a meeting about uh, this. Um, the land administration domain model. Um, and interesting is to see this ISO norm. So that is an international norm about how should the land administration, the system of land administration be organized. And the war on this has been as ongoing for 20 years and still improving. So what we see here is just the core. 
bigger and becomes bigger and bigger. And yeah, one of the great things is that it helps countries and helps organizations improve their systems because now we have models. And of course, you will adapt this model to your uh, country needs. But when we think on a global, global level, it's interesting that at the moment we have the model that's the same all over the world, right? it's ISO norm that offers the possibility to speak with this over. So we can exchange information. And of course, that's very interesting from the perspective from international land transactions, but maybe you'll just compare countries, how they're working, how they're dealing. Um, but here we see the core who, what, and where party, who, yeah, what's the about the rights, uh, restrictions and responsibilities. Now, of course, we can understand what the right is, and for instance, ownership. Uh, restriction is restricting uh, what you can do. Uh, responsibility is a bit more unclear than something you have to do, for instance, and be that you have to, uh, the maintenance of a dike on your uh, land. Now, of course, that's something for Dutch. Uh, you need dikes, otherwise, uh, there's no ground because it's sea. So it can be that you have the responsibility to pay for the maintenance. And then yeah, as you see here, that's the question where, what, um, no parcel, but the basic administrative unit. So the model allows also systems to have a different uh, way to identify a piece of land uh, called the parcel. But always there's a basic administrative unit. And uh, to open and that has also to do with the 3D elements in land use, but you can also have the spatial units uh, under that spatial administrative But I'm not going to talk too much about it. Lecture three will deal this with, with this. Um, uh, I'm a lawyer, so for me, uh, it's the most important part. Uh, so this is right. So I'm going to zoom in on uh, the whole aspect of the title. So, so uh, we can call it, and I took this uh, for the more uh, easy uh, to have a small look. And I will deal with this in the next lecture. Uh, yeah, right. All the time I'm talking about the owner, but it's very simplified. Because we don't have only ownership rights, but all people can use the land. For instance, the regional, and the Japanese for the Dutch students. Uh, I suppose you have uh, heard about Airpath. Um, Lease is known in the English speaking countries, now it's a term in French, what is it? The red plastic lease, the user rights. Yeah, well, I would have a French book, but uh, I, I, I can. I can uh, um, yeah, where it says super PC. Yeah, there's a user right to give to someone who used it for a longer time. So, um, yeah, so the user first, it's also um, it's more for, for the legal stuff. So, I'm not going to go too much, but it's important to keep in mind that the system of that administration should also deal with all the rights that function. Both rights are there. That depends on the legal system. And that gives also the difficulty when you want to understand information. And for instance, when I am going to investigate the situation about plot of land in Greece, um, I should keep in mind that the Greek 
uh, the Dutch system maybe resembles the Dutch, so I can recognize some things and I will be an owner, but there might be other rights I cannot really understand because that's connected to the Greek law system. Maybe even to Greek culture, yeah? because law and culture have also connections. Um, and then we get another thing that's very really interesting security rights. Uh, what, what are security rights? When do we use security rights? Uh, markets. What, what is the importance of markets? Okay. Why should I give someone security rights? I'm the owner of the key set, my household. Why should I give someone the security rights? Mortgage, we can take. I have a piece of land, I'm the owner. Story by this. How do we know that? I know. And I give someone uh, a mortgage. Also, now this is rotation. This is the church. Now it's the same as the pregnancy. That's a right I give to someone. And I can tell you that means that I have to go to a legal specialist and we will make a deed that deed will be registered for the system of land administration. But uh, what's the background of this? What's the meaning of security right? Uh, is there anyone who uh, ever, uh, uh, someone to come, to come to you and say, I need now uh, 100 euro very quick? But I promise you to pay back tomorrow. What's the best way to ensure that the, the person who is uh, giving him or her one hundred euro? What's the best way to ensure that he will pay you back next week? That's indeed a guarantee. What will you ask? Yeah, for a for a guarantee. I mean, piece of paper or something more. It's a good friend, but you never know. You want a good guarantee. What will you ask? An asset, indeed. Give me something. Okay. So the person who wants that one little euro has a very valuable book. It's very expensive. So you ask him, give me that book, and I will give that book back at the moment you pay me. Return me what I pay. But the whole idea of mortgage, of course, you cannot do that with a house. And you cannot go to, uh, now we go to most of the time, a person who's giving money back. Now you cannot say, okay, take my house because this is the house where I live in. So they invented something else that's called the mortgage. So at the moment, I don't pay the bank. Can take my house and sell it. I do mortgage. Of course, you can say it's a bit negative because there's the problem that I, the bank will take my house, but it can also say it's very costly. And then we get the name of the company in the area. So I sell all my years ago, it was very famous, the uh, Soto. He was questioning himself why um, does uh, the, the whole system of capitalism work in the West and not in other countries? And he said one of the problems with older countries, the poor countries, is that people have a lot of assets, so they have a right to land, they use the land, but they cannot use it for a mortgage, so they cannot use it as an asset, as a security, because it's not registered. So the Soto was putting a lot of emphasis on the importance of registration, so land administration, to improve the economy. So because of the whole system of land administration, and I said the important task of land administration is to offer uh, security, 
we can rely on the information. So at the moment, someone, if a fee arrives at the bank and he says, I want to borrow money and I'm going to give you the security right, the bank wants to know that I can reach the offer. And that's where the whole system of lender administration is very important because they can go to the lender administration, ask who's the owner of this house. Uh, the person also says that it be. And then, of course, the step is, is a reliable system of lender administration. Then the bank will know that this fee is equal to the mortgage. So at the moment, if the fee doesn't pay, they can sell this house. That's in a nutshell the importance of lender administration for the whole economy. And security is not only about security for me, but also security for others, especially the bankers. So the security rights play a very important role in uh, the practice of lender administration. Angie, you can say, lender administration, Angie, together with it. Security rights as a tool to improve, to boost the economy. We can go to the bank and get more money. I can invest in my house or my company. Now, this is a nutshell the sum of all. And now, something that is forgotten in this whole uh, picture. Yeah, we were thinking that then we were planning on something outside the system. Now we know better. So, what is also has an impact on my right on a piece of land is the third call. We call it researchers. Government, I think the presenters will have to show me as it's called in the uh, most uh, English speaking parts of the world. It's determining what you can do with this plant. Now, the students of architecture will know this, I suppose. Near the step of the Here with the stemming plot, let you split. No? Maybe. No, okay. Uh, maybe I'm more interested in this, but uh, if you want to know what, what you can build on the piece of land, you have to investigate the whole system of uh, yeah, the, the land use plan. Of how high can I build? Can I put industry on it or only housing? Or it's only allowed to have sheep on it because it's metal and I can only use it for algae. Sorry, how do you call it? Peter, help me. Yes. Now, there are a lot more uh, whole restrictions, but what I want to emphasize is that what the Government is doing restricting us in the use, and that's of course uh, in common, uh, common interest. Uh, it's also a background of urbanism. Uh, how do we want to the city to develop? Public law is a very important instrument, and it's a very important tool because government can say, no, This is for roads, this is for industry, and there we have housing. And one of the tools that an urbanist has. To guide the development of the city. Okay, now I will deal with this uh, uh, later on in this uh, series of lectures, but this is a short introduction on the right. Okay, now all this first part, but now, yeah, I said in 2011. Uh, Lenders didn't realize that uh, we are only dealing with rights and restrictions, but not with the public law part. Uh, that's because in most of the times, I think it's still all countries, there's two distinct parts. And uh, we have in the part the organization dealing with lending planning, and we have the part dealing with uh, what we call cadastral debt registry. In fact, now we realize that it's all. Should be one part of, of land administration right? because together they influence what I can do with the piece of land parcel. But until now, and also in the Netherlands, where we have, uh, I think we all have quite uh, well uh, working system, we see that uh, quite nice. 
version that when we want to have information on the left hand side, we go to the last one I talked about. Well, if we want to have the information about the left hand side, uh, we have to go to the last one I talked about. Um, and this bit strange because they don't talk together. Well, me as a citizen, if I want to know what I can do, this plan has to uh, go to two different systems, get the information, and to bring it together. And of course, there's also the same for the, for the government, because the government also wants to know what the citizen can do with the piece of paper. Also, the government itself has to go to two different systems. What we are working about uh, that's still work in progress is to combine those uh, two genomes uh, in one system. Now we go to the final part, which is about the identification of uh, here called the parcel of uh, the plot of land. And I can tell you uh, that, that all countries have different systems for identification. Um, I feel a nice book uh, report is uh, 70 pages, uh, again from the United Nations, and it's only dealing with the technical part of the identifiers. So, uh, so you understand what I'm telling now is very short, just an introduction to moral is also part of your uh, assignment. And of course, it's not only about the bonus points for your uh, for your uh, exam, but it's also about learning about the system, working with it. So uh, please uh, work on your assignment. But you will then see that uh, different countries have different ways to identify. But the report is about the same. We need a piece and a basic administrative unit and an LADM uh, to find it. Now, this is an example from. Uh, the Netherlands, uh, those were, uh, Peter mentioned it the first day on the cadaster. Wow, this is a city map, only black lines. And uh, yeah, with uh, also numbers. That's so important. Later on, he changed. Now he's only working on the numbers and the whole system and the database. Um, but this is the important map that identifies now we know where it is, how big it is. What are the boundaries? That has a number. This is in the Dutch system. Uh, I think that is introduced also by Napoleon. So I think maybe the French is the same, but I'm not sure about Canada because Canada, of course, uh, is a different country. So, but it's just an example of what we have is a municipality. In this case, Armamir. We have a section, uh, just two letters. In this case, uh, a cross letter, and then a parcel. And Nice is if you wonder right away where it's coming from. It's also effect by Napoleon, just the uh, idea from Napoleon. No, the whole idea of the section that came because uh, at that time this digital map that is grid, but in the time of Napoleon, of course, you had paper maps, and now yeah, you can make very big maps uh, world, but uh, it should be a bit handy. So when you have a big municipality, they divide it the whole municipality. In several maps and they call them section. Simple like that. So now you see that the technical possibilities of a time influence the system they yeah, make use today. So of course now you can say it's extremely silly to have numbers per section. Because that means that there are going to be the same parcel number 2042. In Adam or near, but in all sections. Now, of course, you can say that it's very confusing. So I'm going to build a completely new system, but then uh, of course changing the existing system is not so easy. But it can mean that uh, when you have to design a land administration for a country that has very bad land administration, uh, nothing there, I mean, it's on paper, so uh, you have to pass to. Uh, Design the system that might be good not to copy your own system, your familiar tool, but to see well, what is the best system and well, what will be the best system in 50 years. Of course, that prediction is the most difficult part.
then we all know the world of the world. How will the world look in 50 years? I have no idea. I think I will also never know. But you're still young. Um, yeah, and now yeah, the parcel uh, to the man is not always sufficient to the ground. That is my object. Speaking about the potential object. Now, again, just an example from the Netherlands. It's going to be completely different in another country. But this is an example we see here again that the, the, the net does have numbers. And on this parcel, black lines building. But the building, yeah, there's not uh, one building, but in fact, there are three units of apartment building. Very small one, and also bigger. High rises with hundreds of apartments, but this is more than an area that we touch small apartment building with three apartments on one parcel. Now, how do I identify? Now, then we can make use of the, the special unit, the LADM. And even before we had the LADM, LADM the Dutch cadaster had a system because then yeah, they give and Nice to see we have a land parcel, the number and set system, which can be better per section as a number. But now the confusing part starts, I can understand why it is like that. At the moment, um, you have an apartment right, then you get a different number that has got totally no relation with the parcel number. When I'm looking at this and I come on all the ground here, I can say, wow, what is this? And the letter A for apartment. And yeah, the letter A apartment, we have a number for the apartment. In this uh, building, there are only three apartments. So we have A, one, A, two, and A, three. But it's just an example. Again, it can be completely different, it will be completely different in all the country. It's just a good system. By the way, just uh, for you, uh, why it's for us maybe very confusing that there is no relation between the parcel number and the apartment uh, complex number. Why is it not really property? I can tell you there are countries that will not do like this because that there is a relation between this number and the number behind the parcel number. But why is it in, when I'm thinking from database specialist, I'm not a database specialist, these, um, why is it not really a problem? The number has no, absolutely no relation with the parcel number, because it's own number. Yes, it's just to make it link. It's an identifier. And of course, for humans, I think I'm correct. Yeah. The computer doesn't make, it's not investigating what it is. It's just a number, and behind the number, there's information. Yeah. yeah. The reason why in the Netherlands there is a different apartment number than the parcel number is that buildings can be of more parcels. So if they first group together a group of parcels, and they give that a new number, the apartment complex, and on top of that, they have the different unit. And there's a link from the apartment complex number to all the parcels, and the majority of the cases will be one to one. And so you could ask, well, yeah, is that not be better to reduce the number of the parcels? Okay, this was the decision. Um, it's a very funny thing, I think, of all the other systems. What you can have in this need that you get three completely different uh, parcel numbers because they're just number at the moment that the parcel divided in two that you have to take the first uh, new number. So, also this, uh, the same like this. Understand that it's just an index number, and then it's exactly what Peter says now by my uh, the apartment complex. So, this, yeah, you could say 
hoovering above, that is only my conception. So those three parcels are one apartment complex, and then that would say also the first free number that would be something like this. Nothing more. Thank you, by the way, for this link because I forgot it during my talk. Yeah, but there's a system behind it. So this identifier, well, as long as uh, there is a fear identifier, I can find in the old system of land administration. Yeah, the information. No, and uh, then we have some emergency uh, like fire constraints uh, on the last object. Uh, but that's because uh, we should be working on some uh, Supreme Court in the Netherlands, cable networks, it can be anything, electricity, water, gas, uh, data, and those are data, cables, yeah, are distinct property objects. Distinct from the land. And it's interesting for, an, uh, for a company because they can own their own network. So, uh, from an ownership perspective, they don't have to deal with the landowner. Now they have to deal with the landowner. You have a right to have your uh, cable network in the parcel. That's the only thing. But after that, the network as such can be transferred or mortgaged. Okay. But at that moment, the Dutch Gibraltar had a problem because if you need to register the ownership of the uh, cable network, how are you going to do that? Should you uh, make a reference to all the parcel numbers? So you get a list like this. Uh, that's, that's confusing. And it's also dangerous because if I have to refer to all the parcel numbers where the network in it is, I can make a mistake. And we don't like mistakes in land administration. To be reliable. So then they find a uh, system that also a cable network can get um, identified. And where I identify where the cable network is, uh, yeah, is uh, the map. And now it's a bit confusing because in my computing, it will be confusing. But what I said is that when I go to the celestial map in the Netherlands, and we all can, by the way, because this so called open data. Have you, have you ever heard about open data? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now, so we can just access the Dutch potential map. I will never find the cable network. But that's only in, uh, not accessible to anyone in my sense. It's a special, it's about security. So I cannot investigate and say, oh, there's a NATO pipeline for oil. I understand that we still don't want that information to be shared. But also, not like this. So I got this from uh, a public notary. Uh, but this is the way to deal with it. So the whole network has no number. I'm not going to talk too much about it. But it's good to be like a system for parcels. But again, it is just an identifier. I uh, just this is a very important identifier to find the system uh, to find the object. Okay, uh, I'm talking about a nice sheet. And this uh, uh, is for the Dutch is very simple. That's the Dutch Calvin style object, conventional object. And then we get here, uh, that's your network, networks, Utrecht, B, stands for mistake. Uh, the first network is number five, so it was in the beginning. And again, here they just go on the phone and on, so I don't know how many networks they have. Well, yeah, here we have a reference that there is a network drawing that they're taking the number. I don't know if this is a perfect system, because also I've got a kind of emergency, because at the moment the wall says, yeah, the network can be a distinct uh, property, a distinct object, legal object. Yeah, then the land administration should be able to deal with it. So it has, it has invented this system. By the way, this is what you can find in 
system won't lie. You can also find your statement in the venture. This I will deal with it uh, with, uh, in the next lecture. Um, I will skip this one, but this, I will ask you to do this for the next lecture for, for this exercise. Find your own parts of the map. As you have been parts of the Netherlands, when you go back to uh, your uh, country of origin, or think of number one, what will that be? Can I find it in the system of that? Just try to find it. Uh, in, in the Netherlands, it's quite easy because it's all over data. But still, then we have this question this is part of the problem to find if the map is correct. Is it really the, 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 the ownership uh, of the boundary, the legal boundary? And maybe in some countries you cannot find it. We get a lot of information. Uh, for instance, in, in, in England, uh, you will be referred to uh, topographical maps. But try to dig deeper. Might also be part of your uh, assignment. So uh, you can think what, what country you want to do for your uh, assignment. Okay, we're not going to do that. Uh, now, very shortly about systems. Uh, yeah, you're going, and I'm going to uh, bring you over. <laughs> <later. laughs> uh, of course, I promise. You don't need an asset for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, systems. Yeah, uh, this is the same old one for all the time. The answer is definitely no. Now, this core will be the same, but the way they are dealing with it, that core won't be the same. And what also not won't be the same is this. Uh, Reliability and the failure, the legal failure of the setting about the information you get. Can we rely on it? It's the guarantee. And what, because I'm talking about the, the perfect system. Uh, I don't know if perfect systems uh, exist. What I do know when we look backwards in history, that we see that there are improvements. That in the beginning, the transactions of land uh, make it very simple. Um, always I'm dealing with A, it's referring to uh, ownership of B, land and B. In the beginning, there was no paper. So there was an oral agreement. Okay, I'm going to sell it to you. I can do A and B. Now, how are we going to prove that? Now, the only way is witness. So people standing around and they can tell later on in the leads a sold the 10 years ago to b so b is the owner now, of course there's a big system so later on they sent it out that would be the paper the b is nothing more than an official paper there was written a sells the land to b so now b is over and in the beginning there was no uh, there was before the phone there was no government was dealing with it. So that's called the private conveyance. You had to have if, if B is selling to C and C is selling to B. It means that you have to collect all those deeds and keep it in your own uh, archive. Yeah? Because at the day someone was wondering, are you really the owner? Ah, then you can say, yeah, look, I have a deed because C sold it to me, and I have another deed that proves that B sold it to that C, and I have even also a deed that A sold it to B. Uh, this was the system, for instance, in uh, England, was still in use until 1925. Uh, but they didn't success, succeed yet. Because at the moment there are not many uh, uh, transfers, it's still possible that the land is not registered in the English land administration, but you have still to uh, refer to the full uh, deed called in England unregistered land. Um, 
but of course that is yeah then I have a whole collection of beads and I must be very careful about those beads because if someone steals it from me or my house burns down and I don't have beads uh, in the first case then the, the thief can yeah impulse the easy owner because he has beads the real owner doesn't have the, has the, no beads anymore and in the second case I cannot sell my land or I cannot mortgage my land so I cannot use it as a collateral not as an asset because I cannot prove it my beads are gone the 3d property so, and it was even before the polio, I started to say, well, it's better that the government will keep those needs. Now, Napoleon only improved that system because he was not really the inventor of his own system. He found all over Europe systems where uh, uh, needs were kept by the government, most of the local government, courts, and later on, they made the national system. And what they do is just register the deed, and what it is in this system that is not guaranteed. The government is not going to say because we have in our system uh, all those deeds eh, somewhere in our system. But that is the question. So it will be correct now that you say, okay, you can investigate it, you can read all the deeds, but we're not giving any guarantee. In fact, there's still the system in the Netherlands. And now you may think that's very strange. Uh, the government doesn't give any guarantees. I'm going to deal with it in, uh, next week because uh, of uh, legal specialists who are not really part of the government, but the public notaries are responsible to check if in fact the transfer they will check it if it's correct. In all the countries, uh, that's much easier. But as a remnant of the big uh, registration, there's no guarantee by the, uh, by the government. And the next step, maybe the final step, is the so called title registration. Yeah, then it's completely different because then the, the, the government gets the deed, they investigate, and then they change the system of registration. Okay, she sold the deed, that's correct. So now we put the system D is the owner. And in the most perfect system, Torrent system, except by Sir Torrance, uh, Australia, Canada, parts of the US, uh, yeah, at the moment D is registered in the system by the government, and you rely on it. Okay, D is the owner, B gives them the guarantee. So, Maximum security. Yeah, that was uh, from the uh, uh, historical part. Now, in the final minutes, we will have to begin with this, and then next week we will uh, have to look at the uh, also uh, look at the sheet before. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Systems in the, in the world, all over the world, are uh, the deed registration and the title registration. Of course, there are still countries who also have that, that uh, private conveyancing system where people have to keep the deeds themselves. Even maybe even there are parts in the world where still the oral agreement is enough. But if you look at modern systems of that administration, it's mostly about the deed registration, the first title registration. And therefore, I also include in the paper I've written by Sabet and Jan Schaefberg, sorry, and me about the yeah, question can we improve the Dutch system to go from an existing deed registration, registration deed to title registration? And in fact, we didn't write it because uh, we thought it was a funny idea. In fact, it is a reflection of the report we had to write for the Dutch class. Because of course, the Dutch government is yeah, asking questions should we go to the tax registration? Should the Dutch government give guarantees? This is the question we're dealing now, or the question that we've been dealing for more than 10 years. Uh, I don't think that I will see that the Dutch will change the tax registration. 
but that, again, that demonstration is not about describing a system, it's not only about that part, but also about wondering can we improve the system? How does it work? And or is the space for improvement? Or should we make a conclusion that we need registration in the Netherlands? However, there are now government guarantees, it's working very well. Uh, look around to see that the economy is blooming. And so we should also have a good say that, that uh, okay, uh, our registration of needs is, is okay, it's fine, it's not perfect, but it works. Uh, now, I'm going to solve this. Uh, it's now half past 12. Uh, are there any questions? Then I will see you tomorrow. Uh, now, question do you know where the geo lab is? Okay, I can find it. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, no problem. Okay, yeah. um, I will see you uh, tomorrow and uh, yeah, have a look at the material. And next week, we go more in deep. And uh, again, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to uh, interrupt. Thank you.